So I was not planning on making a video today, but I stumbled upon something that I think is so cool that I'm making it immediately. It's like 4.45 in the morning and I have to share this because I think this is very cool in future implications especially. So what you see right here kind of looks like CSGO and that is because in a way it kind of is. Now to put it super simply and we'll get more in depth for this in the video and I'll show better gameplay that's not just like a crappy like screen recording from a phone. What happens here is this is being generated locally off of a single NVIDIA 3090 Ti card. Now, this model actually gets trained on sort of images from gameplay along with the corresponding action that is taken. So, if I move forward here, essentially what's happening is the model is, you know, say predicting the next frame. So, when I move forward, this is after the model has been trained, kind of, what it thinks that I should be seeing. And to be honest with you, it is a little wonky, however, this is a very early kind of demonstration of this technology that somebody can run on their video card at home locally, as I'm doing right now. So as we turn here and walk around, you can actually see like the car looks really good. You can see that this is somewhat like of a person shape. And when I click the button, you do see a bit of maybe not muzzle flash right now, but you can actually see the weapon recoiling. There's a bit of muzzle flash. And I think that that is likely one of the most consistent parts that we'll see is at least recoil there because I think in terms of actual variation in training that is probably one of the most consistent elements. So what I mean by that is when you're playing CSGO the weapon is pretty much always there and since you're shooting so often the model really gets a good kind of sample to see okay this is how it works and this is how the gun goes and things like that. So when I move around like this to the side you can see that sometimes it kind of gets really wonky and that is just kind of a feature of a model that is trained on more of a limited data set as well as one that is running on consumer hardware that is essentially almost two generations out. Wow look at that that really that was fantastic the the curve there I mean this is really you know, I've done myself a huge disservice here because I'm not actually screen recording at the same time. But look at this. I mean, it's probably hard to see, but this is really, you can see that, okay, so sometimes the gun morphs and things like that. I mean, ooh, that's a cool gun. <laughs> but this is just so cool. And future implications of this are, I believe, to say far-reaching. You can even jump. So, okay, there's like a, a barrier. I'm going to jump over it. And now we go back down here, and this really, I mean, Google, I think it was Google's, Google's research lab or something like that, had come out with a kind of demo about this. Oh, I don't even remember what game, oh, it was Doom. It was Doom. And, in, and now look what I'm doing. And this is like a like month or two later. This is really fantastic. And like, <laughs> I am lost for words at the implications of the ability to expand this technology into any game you can imagine. That's why. All right, so obviously I am not going to just show this very cool thing and then just completely neglect to actually show where it came from. So this is the diamond repository here on GitHub. And when we click this, we just kind of see a little bit about it, um, who made it. It's currently at 792 stars, which I believe will multiply tenfold within a short amount of time. And we see it's diffusion for world modeling, visual details matter in Atari. So there is kind of one way here where you can play an Atari game with it. However, what I think a lot of people are going to be more interested in, just in terms of how actually cool it is, and technologically impressive, I think, is the CSGO one. Because this is just, like what you just saw, it's very visually impressive to actually see that your local machine can likely run this. Well, if you're watching this video, your local machine can likely run this. So this is the GitHub repository. And truth be told, it was really quite incredibly easy to set up everything and run. A lot of times you never know if the repository is going to be easy to work with or cause a lot of issues, but this one I am happy to report is. 
So I think the next thing I'm just going to quickly run through is how I went about installing this on my own machine, which is Ubuntu 2022.04. It is an NVIDIA 3090 Ti and pretty much nothing else special. All right, so we see the repository here and because I'm doing the CSGO, we just quickly scroll down and check out the CSGO branch. And here we're met with some really quite simple installation instructions. So I'm just going to follow those. Now I'm not logged in, so I'm just going to clone it this way. And once we're in there, we just follow these steps. And it really is quite simple. I was happy I did not have any dependency issues or anything like that. And everything installed without too much trouble. Then we're going to create a new Conda environment with Python 3.10. Oh, okay, so see, I'd already done this. So, but we're going to, yeah, we'll remove the existing one and then make it once more. So once that's done, we just activate our Conda environment and we will do pip install requirements.txt. And since I've already done this, a lot of these are cached. And I'll probably get some errors down here just about mismatches with some other things I have installed on my machine. Now, I want to quickly just show that the default configuration runs best on a machine with a CUDA GPU, so an NVIDIA machine like this. And when you click on that, this is the default configuration. I am not going to get into these, um, not because I don't understand them, of course, no, but because uh, that's outside the scope here. <laughs> so now, okay, we see here it's all set. And so the next thing we're going to do is you would just do play.py and they do actually talk about Apple Silicon. So you can actually, I believe, hypothetically run this on an Apple Silicon Mac, which is very cool and would be cool to see the performance on some of those high memory systems. But the next thing to do is we are going to compile. So the model runs faster if compiled, but it takes longer at startup. I think that is a fair trade-off. However, quickly before I do this, I wanna go into the issues here and show you one thing. So in the closed here, we see that the image is smaller and this user had kind of this happen, which I did as well when I was first doing it, is it pretty much showed up at a very tiny, tiny size of the screen. So the dev just kind of said, okay, use size multiplier, which is what they did. They used five in the demo. So if I just paste that here and then add in, oh, size multiplier five, when I press enter, it will do its thing and that will allow this to open at a larger size as you kind of saw in the demo that I was doing. And it quickly shows you your environment actions here, which you'll likely be pretty familiar with. And once you press enter, it will bring you to a black screen for a while and will stay here until it ultimately loads and then you can begin to play. So we can see here now that it has loaded and it is much larger than what you would get if you did not use the size multiplier flag. And Sometimes you have to kind of wait a little bit even after you see this initial image that's loaded in here. But I'll just kind of keep on the W key and then here we go. So, and you can kind of see me spam clicking my mouse and you can see the recoil from the weapon and things like that. And I find that if you move around here and you happen to kind of encounter a thing where the video goes out, you can kind of just almost give it a second and it will in some cases reorient itself. So if I were to just like quickly, ooh, that was a nice muzzle flash. If I were to like quickly like spam it here, or if you point it down at something, it gets a little more confused because I believe there's probably less training data for positions like this, as well as the fact that there's less variation when looking just simply at the ground. But if I put the mouse back up kind of like this, and then if I say slowly scroll to the right and then look around slowly, it usually does come back to a more lucid um, image of something. So 
like that you can see okay and if I turn this way all right we're getting a wall again and I do believe that maybe if I give it a little keyboard input as well like back it will likely be able to okay that looks like the Loch Ness monster coming out of that it's like some all right so I may have just totally cooked this thing but it is very cool and you will play with it and see what I'm talking about and I'm interested in testing this on some lower spec hardware. Oh, look at the gun change. That's so cool. <laughs> this is very dreamlike. It does kind of make you wonder about the human brain and potential similarities between some of these technologies and us. All right. Well, press escape and you're back into the terminal. Now, I don't actually know how much um, video memory this is using. Because that was after I quit, it was showing about 3 gigabytes and I think 150 watts. But I am not able to see this while I am in the app. So, yeah, I just wanted to share this. And I also just wanted to run through the install process on in the back half of this video because it was really simple. And I think it's something that a lot of people are going to be infatuated with just from a conceptual level of nothing more. So, yeah, props to this repository these individuals because this is really really I mean this was Google's this came out I think pretty recently and you see it here okay this is doom very cool but now we are playing CSGO on a 3090 <laughs> and this just came out like a couple months ago it's absolutely insane so yeah that's why.